Hi guys, it's Paul Buchanan-Jones with another tutorial on Mystica Boutique. Today I'm going to show you some work using uh, VR180 in Mystica Boutique. Uh, I've got a couple of shots here. I've got one shot here. Two separate cameras from an Insta360 Evo. Um, first things first, um, left and right lenses. Now, you'll notice that everything's all squished into the long format. If ever you're looking at a shot that you're not quite sure or you just want to see the original format, how it should look, come to effects, drop on a framing node, bring that up and just set your X scale to 50. And that will then show you the actual circular format that came off the camera. Now we can see here that we've got this lens on the left hand side of the camera, which means that this was the right hand lens. And if I just move the framing node to the other one, do the same thing. We can see that we've got the same kind of uh, issue here, really. For me, it's an issue. You know, I've got a lens impacting into my shot, um, but we can fix that. We can actually fix that pretty easily in Boutique, and I'm going to show you how. So the first thing is let's get rid of this framing node and stack our footage as they need to be. So all the footage needs to be stacked vertically in Boutique for you to perform a stitch on it. Now, what I want to do actually is come up to the node graph, and I'm just going to zoom in by rolling the mouse wheel up. I want to take a look at make sure which way round I've got my footage. So this is the right hand lens. I'm going to put that on the right hand side. So I've got my left hand lens on the left, my right hand lens on the right. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to actually do is to bring in a Comp 3D between the two of these and I'm just going to unclip that. What I want then is this is going to be the left hand eye. I'm going to create a new eye from these two separate ones. So we've got this one, which is the left hand. Yeah, so I want that one to the bottom. This is going to be my base layer. And I want this one to the top. This is where I'm going to actually come into here. And I'm just going to bring, create a shape. I'm going to create a smooth shape. And all I want to do really is just clip this little part out. So left mouse clicking and then middle mouse to close the circle. I've got a few too many points in here, actually. This thing does create some really nice smooth shapes. So I don't really need all of these points. Got a bit carried away there. Um, and I'm just going to grab these three points. Can't grab three. Let's move that one back out the way. I just want to grab these three points and um, just feather on the outside a bit and maybe feather on the inside a bit. We'll see how that looks. So I'm going to switch to RGB alpha so I can see what I've got. That looks OK. So I come to my Comp 3D and lo and behold, we've replaced it. Now, we've still got some problems here, obviously. We've got some ghosting. The reason I use the Comp 3D is because what I can do, rather than just doing a 2D paste, with the 3D paste, what I can do is just bring the, the Z position forward ever so slightly, and it gives me the ability to then uh, rotate things in Y. So if I just hold down Control, hold down Alt, and just rotate gently. So if I need to, I wouldn't bring this any further forward than about four, to be honest, but that gives you enough space that you can just squish the perspective to try and match the original footage. Now, we obviously can move, uh, I'm just going to move it on the X, come off, come off, move this on the X into position, and I'm going to move it on the Y. What's going on there? That looks about right. Okay, uh, so that's uh, mouse up and down to zoom in and out. Right mouse click to move everything around. That doesn't look too bad. Now I'll come back and I'll tweak this a little bit later, but that pretty much fixes one eye. So on the Comp 3D, I'm just going to come to the Edit Attributes and we'll call this uh, Left. I click off to make that stick and then selecting everything, holding down 
Alt. Left mouse click. I was right mouse clicking for some reason. Okay, so we've now done that. So we've now got our left eye. I'm just going to come into the attributes here and rename this one straight away, right eye. Now, obviously what we want to do is to come back to here, take that and delete it. Just refresh the frame. Um, what we want to do now is the opposite. So I'm going to disconnect that one, disconnect that one. I'm just going to delete those off. And this time I want that to be number one and this to be number two. We're going to come to this image and we're going to create a shape just as we did last time. And we'll just stick some points in here like that. Uh, it's somewhere about there, isn't it? Somewhere about there, yeah. Let's pull that one back. Just grab those three, and I'll just use the width this time, which will do the inside and outside at the same time. Okay, uh, now we'll take a look at the right eye, and we're just going to do the same thing. So that's right mouse click to move around, mouse wheel up and down. So we've got that same problem. So hang on, what do we got here? Uh, Oh, we do have it, don't we? So we've actually got what I'm going to do. Actually, I want to reset this layer because that's on layer two. Uh, so just selecting the layer two bit there, hit delete, resets everything back to where it should be. Because obviously all the settings, because I copied everything over, was from the left eye. So what we want to do now then is just on layer two again, bring it forward to say not that, to say four, and then we're just going to move this on the X. You can see this one's out quite a bit more than the last one. Bring it in, but it gives me, as I say, the option to just, I can crush the perspective, you see that, by rotating on Y. Um, if I didn't bring it forward, it would just instantly there. You see, it just pops through as they impact each other. But we can just tweak them a little bit. You can also actually uh, rotate on Z as well if you need to. You know, so you can do that kind of thing as well. And that looks pretty good. So what do we do now? Well, now we've got our new left and right eye. We come to effects and we'll add in a VR stitch. And we'll just come to here and we can see we got nothing. All right. So what we actually want to do then is to bring up the media, go to our camera presets and find the one for Insta360 Evo, uh, the 180. And I'm just going to drop that in and then connect these two into it. Double click that. I'm going to put the node graph away because you can see that the VR stitch is expecting something quite a bit longer. So I'm just going to select the left eye, come to edit, select get duration, select my stitch and set duration. OK, so right click again to just drag around. I'm going to bring my playhead up and double click that. Great. OK, so we've now got something. It's all a bit um, out of sync. But that's fine. We're going to fix all of that now. So we'll go to stereo mode and I'm going to switch into black and white anaglyph. Now, this is where we need to do a standard sort of fix, really. First, we're going to have a quick look at the image and see where the problem is. Many of the problems are to do with the horizon. We've got a lot of parallax shift out here on the horizon that shouldn't be. Anything really beyond 10, 15 meters doesn't really exhibit a lot of parallax shift. So you want to fix all of that. Now, the way we do that is we'll come to a line mode and then selecting one of our cameras. So I'm going to select input camera two. And we've got there's a number of different control points in here. So this line here out towards the edges is one part and on this vertical line. So the vertical and horizontals out towards the edges allow you to drag the thing up and down. 
But if you come towards this one, up towards the edges will give you a sort of like a shrink and grow. And then towards the center will give you a kind of roll. Yeah. So likewise here, this gives you a bit less of a roll, but here we're just going to roll things up and down and then we're just going to shrink and stretch till we can get things lined up. So what I want to do is to basically remove all of this fringing. I don't want any of that. So I'm just going to zoom in here and pull that one down. And we can also just push this one over slightly and just keep tweaking till we... Now I'm going to have to zoom out and just push this back over a bit. Now you'll want to spend as much time as, as is required for your shot. Um, I'm not going to make you, I might, maybe I will, maybe I'll make you watch all of this, eh? but that, that would be horrible. So as you can see, it's just a question of just keep tweaking away until you get it pretty much on. So we can see out towards the edges now, but more or less there. Now, it may well be, you know, that I'm trying to judge everything off of here, but perhaps, you know, you can see that the second building here is, is out. So I'm actually going to judge, I'm going to line up that one. And what I'm going to do is come back to my comp 3D for the, which eye we are on, right eye. And let's see about rotating now on the Y and see what happens. Nothing, that's because I'm on the wrong eye. So we'll come to the other one. There we go. So we can see now how I've just managed to rotate that one in. So now let's come back to the other one. So the right eye, and we're gonna rotate on Y and we can then just pull that one in and we can rotate on Z. Okay, not that one. Rotate on X. That's not doing anything. So we'll just push that up a little bit on Y and in a little bit on X. There we go. That's that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, okay. Cool. That's now our fixes done. I'm going to come out of stereo mode. So we've got that pretty much done. We've fixed it about as much as we can. You could, if you wanted to, you know, if I wanted to clip a little bit more out of here, it's going to be a, a, a playoff, really. If I come to the VR stitch, to come off of a line mode and I go to show one input, you can see you see this part up here, this little black pit that's hanging in. That is what this is. Now, if I wanted to get rid of that, I could close this circle in by adjusting the circle mask. But you can see that we're now losing this big part of the building. So it's kind of... I think I'll just put up with it, you know. I'd rather keep some of the interesting footage and put up with that little bit than uh, than lose it. You could come in and paint it out, of course, but that'll be something for another day. What I do want to do next, though, is to show you how to do a multi-layered grade once we've got our fix done. So on top of this lot, I'm just going to select the top part of the stack, come to effects and add in a color grade. And what I want to do really is I want to split this into four separate parts. I got the jetty, the far end of the sea out here, and then the closer, two closer parts. To me, this has got some, you know, this has got nice greeny colors in it. This has got more blues, and then we've got the sky. So I want to boost the colors on the foreground on the jetty, pick up the greens a little bit, tweak the blues and just brighten up the sky somewhat. Now it's an, it's an Evo, so we've got a fair bit of noise. That's just compression noise. There's 
probably not a lot that I'm going to be able to do to fix that. But we can make the, the shot a little more interesting in the first place. So let's just start by double clicking into here and we'll rename this to base. And we'll, this is going to do the whole shot. So we're just going to tweak this down, give it a little bit more on the black. Maybe push our gammas. Let's bring up a um, scope, shall we, to see where we are. And I'm going to change this one to a waveform. Not that. RGB overlap is what I want. Ah, we are losing a big point out the top here. Let's just scroll through and see what's going on. So we can see actually, you know what? There was a bit of a flare. I'd probably just not long turned the camera on or I might have just turned towards the sun. This is a short clip from uh, a longer piece, obviously. So we might want to try and control that a little bit, I think, before we do anything else. Let's see if we can't control that. So I'm just going to reset this. Um, we're going to do a uh, turn on auto key and I'm going to come to the end. Just take a look at that. So this, the sun is much reduced and the blues are a little darker. So let's just pull the gamma down a little bit, pull the black point down a little bit. Why do I not see anything happening? Why do I literally not see anything happening? Make sure, oh, because I wasn't on the grade node. Double click the grade node. So the problem was I was still actually, I'd left clicked on the stitch node. So let's just reset those so we know where we are. Okay, so we've still got the same problem, of course, that it darkens off. So let's just pull the gamma and the black point down slightly. And then we'll just reset those to where they were. There we go. So we've now got a bit of a dynamic grade going on. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more on the dark side, isn't it there? And what are we getting? We're getting a little bit in the middle, but as the camera's sort of like balancing out a bit, isn't it? So maybe I'll just push the gamma up a tad in the middle there. Just give myself a middle keyframe. Okay, well, there's not a lot I can do about the sun, to be quite honest. I can, uh, from here, we've already pulled this down, actually. We've pulled the pivot point down. No, uh, not a lot I can do there, so I'm going to leave that. Uh, what I will do, though, is come and add a new layer, and we'll call this, um, uh, we'll just call this main, eh? Whatever we want to call it. And from here, I'm now going to just sort of like put a bit more contrast in. And I might just warm up the, the mid-tones a little bit. Okay, so now let's take care of the jetty. So we'll do that. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add in, you know, what? I think we'll try a Kia. So we're going to come in and pick uh, these surfaces here. And I'm going to turn on the highlight so I can see what I've got. Okay, that's not what I want. So I'll use the minus button and just pick whoop, too much that lot back in. Um, that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to right mouse click and just feather that out a bit just to soften it up. And likewise here on these points. And um, what I'm going to do is put a key blur on. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, not grow. I want to fill some holes in case we've got any in there, there is a bit. And on my second filter, I'm going to remove the sparks, which will get rid of some of those small outlying things and anything that might pop up as the key shifts around. And I'll maybe just put a little bit of pre-key blur on as well. That would should probably do me, actually. I've got most of the stuff in there. Now, I'm just going to scroll through to see... Oh, uh, yeah, okay. 
Okay. I'm going to create my shape and just click in here. Set these points. And I will close it off there. And then what I'm going to do is come in and let's make that one. Um, we'll just make that one sharp and then independent tang. And then I can just tweak that into place. It doesn't look too bad, really. And we're going to do the same here. So we'll make you sharp and independent tang and you sharp, independent tang. Well, actually, you know what? I need to do all of those the same, don't I? So sharp, independent tangs for all of you. And then we can just tweak that one into place that one into place, pull this one back to here. And really just push them all into place now. Right, where are you going? Okay, so sharp, independent tang. And we just want to get a bit of a thing going on. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to double click on one of the points to select all of them. And I'm just going to put a little bit of width on there to feather things out. Now you'll notice we've got this really odd sort of, it carries on for everything. Uh, that's because it's a lat long shape. So it's respecting the lat long curve. Um, and so that when it, it will wrap itself back to the sphere for the, well, the half sphere, really, for the VR 180. Uh, so let's come back to our grade. There we go. Right, that's tidied it up. So if we turn off the highlight now, we've now got the jetty separated from everything else. Uh, we can come to our Let's go to the bands, actually. And what I want to do is in the shadows, push a bit of orange and just pull the midtones down a little bit. Uh, pull the shadows rather down a little bit. And the midtones, I can probably do a little bit of the same. I think that's just a bit too dark. Where you gone? I don't have uh, balls. You can actually do this with um, the iPad, which I probably should have set up in advance. I think that's a bit too much on there. So it's right click, by the way, on these outer wheels, right click, drag left and right to crush and boost, um, and left click and just push the, the balls around. If you've got a control surface, Good for you, you'll know how it works. Um, I'm just going to bring the mid-tones out, push the highlights a little bit. All I want to do really is get, just get a little, just pick up those warm tones in the rock, you know, in this old concrete. Okay, cool. That gets me that done. Now we're going to add a new let layer and I'm going to call this um, blue C. And we're going to come to the Kia again. This time, though, instead of using the HSL Kia, I'm going to use a 3D Kia. And I'm just going to pick my way through some of these. Let's turn on a highlight so we can see what we're getting. I just want to pick out those like that and then just remove some of this stuff up here. I don't really want that. And I'm just going to feather some of this in, actually. So it looks like, you know, we've got a kind of similar problem that we had last time in that I'm getting too much stuff that I don't really want. Yeah. But I do want some of that horizon. 
So, okay, let's just go to window and we'll do lat long again and create shape. I'll turn off the RGB. A. All right. Let's just click some stuff around and we'll fix it afterwards. All right, middle click to close. And we're just going to pull these ones down to here, down to here, out there, kind of ish. And what I'm looking for, you see, is really just out. It's more. The, it's the more distant stuff that I'm interested in for this shot because I want to fix the closer see differently and just put a slightly different color on there. So we're just going to grab all of those and put a bit of a feather on that. Um, does that move around at all? Well, there's something going on, but um, oh, okay. So let's go back to our Kia and we'll just add in whatever that is that's going on there and there. Alrighty. We could have, of course, just done this with the window and didn't need to use the Kia, but uh, it actually just shows you a little bit of how good this 3D Kia is. Okay, so let's turn off our highlight and we'll come to the uh, fixed vectors. And what I want to do is just to pick up some of these. I don't want that. I want a little bit more bluey. Just a little bit more bluey into here. Pull the so maybe we'll just add in a bit of into the primaries as well push a bit of blue into the gamma and just maybe you know what I might just push the saturation slightly okay so now I can tweak this a little bit Let's pull these over. That'll kind of do. I think that will kind of do. We're going to add a new layer. And there we go. Um, we're going to add a new layer. This one will be green C. And this time what we're going to do, I'm just going to, I won't bother with the Kia this time, you know, I'm just going to do this with a window and I'm going to create a shape just kind of over here. And I'm going to create another one on this side here and close those off. And we'll do as we did with the Yeah, I'm going to have to just shift click my way through these. So we'll just go to sharp and independent tang, mouse wheel up to close in. So we'll just come up and, you know, I've got too many in there. Get rid of you and get rid of you. Bring you in and bring you to there. That'll do it. And likewise, uh, we'll take you and you, 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 and you, and we'll do sharp independent tang. Just gonna shove these around. And uh, don't need you. Alrighty. And what we want now then really is we want some different featherings, don't we? So we'll pick these and I'm just going to do a little bit on the inside for these actually. And these also a little bit on the inside just to feather that out. And then these, mm, yeah, I'm not going to worry about those too much, to be honest. Take those, that one, 
Yeah, we're going to put some on the outside of there. I'm just going to bring those in a bit just to sort of like sort of close it down to this greener area. Get rid of you, don't need you. And you know, I don't need you either. Okay. Uh, so with that, then we'll come to the primaries and we'll push some green into the midtones and just give those a little bit of a darken down and we'll do the same into the shadows. Yeah, too dark, well, not sort of like some, some bright into there. Push the highlights up just to make it sort of like more translucent-y. Yeah, that's that's okay. Let's take a look. Alrighty. Uh, finally then, let's just add our last layer, which is going to be the sky. And <clears throat> I think that we can probably do this pretty much with a window. So I'm just going to this time create a, create a shape that long. And I'm just going to basically draw these out like that. Well, let's just allow for there to be a little bit of fog on the horizon, shall we? Oopsie. So we're just going to do that. I'm going to select the whole thing and give it some width. I think we'll give it quite a bit of width this time. And... Uh, let's come to our primaries and actually let's go to the fixed vectors too much a bit better move It's not really getting the shape I want. So I'm going to come to the primaries and in the midtones, just push some blue in. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's just. All right. That's better. It's brightened it up a bit, hasn't it? Cool. So, uh, before, after, before, after. Let me just come off of that thing if I can. There we go. And we should now have it so that we've got a bit more of a, you can see the sun kind of doing its thing. We've obviously got, you know, because of the sun, the, the way the, the iris is changing there. Um, but we've managed to balance that out as much as possible across the timeline. So we've got a bit of a dynamic grade going on there. And we've just sort of like sort of boosted and tweaked everything else. Okay, guys, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you found that of some use. Um, I've got a new tutorial coming up soon as well on the Insta360 Pro and dealing is a multiple shot really where you've got two different parallaxes because part of the shot is very close to the camera and part of it is very far away. So it's fixing those dual parallax issues. So keep an eye out for that. I'll be posting it here. Um, thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.